Welcome to Bark Owls and Nature Bites. Today we're talking about this critter right here, the can of goose. And for a brave little lady, I was really trying my best to find a flamingo to talk about. Turns out we're a little short supply of flamingos here in Wisconsin, so Brooklyn, I tried my best. So let's pretend this is a brown version of a flamingo we have here in Wisconsin. And we're wishing you all the best, Brooklyn. We know you got this. So for the can of goose, I know what you're probably thinking. It's a goose. It honks, it flies, a poop. What else is there to really know about a can of goose? Well, there's definitely more to them than just that. There's actually a really strong connection with can of geese and bark owls and waterfowl preserve. So one of the things about can of geese you might not know is that there's actually seven subspecies of a can of goose here in North America. So when I say subspecies, it's a can of goose, but it's like a different group population of can of geese that's different than other ones. So it's like different versions of them, if you will. So think about like an iPhone 11 or 10 or whatever, there's different versions of that phone, but it's still like an iPhone 10 or 11 or whatever. Well, can of geese, there's different versions of those can of geese. Some are a little bit larger, some have different patterns in the cheeks, some of them live in different parts of the country, so it makes them a little bit different. So for us here in Wisconsin, we have mostly the giant can of goose subspecies. And spoiler alert, the giant can goose is the largest of the seven subspecies. So they're also not very migratory. They're gonna really stick around here for most of the year. They might go a little further south if there's like extremely deep snow or really, really cold temperatures. But otherwise, they're gonna be pretty much here for most of the year, as long as they can find some water and something to eat. The other subspecies, they do migrate up to Canada to breed. So for the giant can of goose, we see them quite a bit now, but that wasn't always the case. Back in the early 1900s, for the giant can of goose subspecies, there really weren't so many left. They were almost, they thought at one time, extinct. There were small populations here and there, but not nearly the numbers that there used to be. So efforts were made across the Midwest to help bring those giant, giant can of geese populations back. And Lewis Henry Barkhausen, who really started Barkhausen and Waterfowl Preserve, he bought three pairs of giant can of geese from Ontario, brought them to here to Barkhausen, and from those three pairs, he gave some to a game farm in Illinois, one to another game farm in Wisconsin, and eventually gave over half that flock that came from those three pairs to the Bay Beach Wildlife Sanctuary in 1948. So he's definitely a big part of getting the giant can of goose population going back here and really throughout North America. So for giant can of geese, you know, the one thing we might be seeing now, especially I would say earlier back in mid-July, and so you might have seen a lot of geese hanging around parks, golf courses, boat launches, wetland areas and a lot of a lot of goose dropping scat poop all over the place the really fun part of the geese thing um what was happening likely was that every year the can of goose does go through a molt so they're going to lose their feathers and grow new ones now i don't mean they're going to drop all the feathers and walk around naked for a while that's just silly let's be serious but they will lose their feathers and grow some new ones and they'll do this in pairs or in batches so they'll actually lose all their flight feathers for a short period of time so they're actually flightless so in that time, they're really kind of flocking up near large wetlands like this or by the lakes, golf courses, anywhere where they can quickly dive into a wetland for safety, but lots of food to eat, lots of those grasses, especially those areas like mowed grass lawn areas. So if you've seen a lot of geese flocking up at the time, pooping all over the place, that was probably what was happening. If you've ever seen geese flying in like, let's just say June, I'd say like mid to late June, even early July, and you've seen geese flying around like they're migrating, well, those are actually probably geese that didn't have a successful nest, or maybe they're just too young to breed. And they'll actually flock up and they'll go off someplace else to find a wetland that's safe so they can start molting, lose those flight feathers, and have a place to get away from safe, getting there for safety. So if you ever see that, they didn't get the dates mixed up, they're actually getting ready to molt. So definitely more to geese than just a hawk and a flying and a pooping for sure. And love them or hate them, with the geese are just part of it here in Wisconsin. So a lot of cool things to look uh, learn about geese still, for sure. One thing too, what did the one goose say to the other goose when he finally figured out how to fly south for the winter? Hey, listen to my great idea. Thanks for watching Bark Cows and Nature Bites.